At last the day came when Snowball's plans were completed. At the meeting on the following Sunday, the question of whether or not to begin work on the windmill was put to a vote. When the animals had assembled in the big barn, Snowball stood up. Though occasionally interrupted by bleeding from the sheep, set forth his reason for advocating the building of the windmill. Then Napoleon stood up to reply. He said very quietly that the windmill was nonsense and that he advised nobody to vote for it and promptly sat down again. He had spoken for barely 30 seconds and seemed almost indifferent as to the effect it produced. At this, Snowball sprang to his feet and shouted down the, sh the sheep who had began bleeding again, broke into a passionate appeal in favor of the windmill. Until now, the animals had been about equally divided on their sympathies, but in a moment, Snowball's eloquence had carried them away. In glowing sentences, he painted a picture of Animal Farm as it might be when sordid labor was lifted from the animals' backs. His imagination had now run far beyond cutters and turnip slicers. Electricity, he said. <laughs> Electricity, he said, could operate thrush machines, plows, harrows, rollers, and reapers and binders besides supplying every stall with its own electric light. Hot water, cold water, and an electric heater. By the time he had finished speaking, there was no doubt as to which way the vote would go. But just at that moment, Napoleon stood up and casting a peculiar long, sidelong look at Snowball, uttered a high-pitched whimper of a kind no one had ever heard before. At this, there was a terrible baying sound outside and nine enormous dogs wearing brass studded collars came bounding into the barn. They dashed straight for Snowball, who only sprang from his place just in time to escape the snipping jaws. In a moment, he was out the door and they were after him. Too amazed and frightened to speak, all the animals crowded through the door to watch the chase. Snowball was racing across the long pasture that led to the road. He was running as only a pig can run. But the dogs were close on his heels. Suddenly he slipped, he slipped, and it, be, it seemed certain that they had got him. Then he was up again, running faster than ever. Then the dogs were gaining on him again. One of them all but closed his jaws on Snowball's tail. But Snowball whisked it free just in time. Then he put on an extra spurt and a few inches to spare, slipped through a hole in the hedge and was never seen again. Boy, is that, what are we doing here today? Marcus Conti reporting on Memorial Day, 2019. And be very respectful today. Uh, right behind me is the fallen, the fallen heroes. Okay. What was Snowball talking about? What was, what's Orwell telling us about about human nature? You're looking out at a field of uh, fallen soldiers in New York State, just New York State after 9/11. So all Iraq and Afghanistan. All dead. Sixty two hundred uh, dead since two thousand nine. But you seen the story in Snowball, right? You seen the story of Animal Farm. Orwell was showing us how how wars start in politics. And it's always over stuff. It's over stuff. This shit, this stuff is my stuff. That stuff over there, that's your stuff. And then someone tries to take someone else's stuff, right? And the bigger the fight, this happens. Right? This happens. They get they, they prey on the young people to fight for them. Napoleon never fought. Snowball never fought. 
in the book, the animals fought for them. They buy into the story, the politics. Oh, our life is going to become easier. And then the war starts. Yeah? So I'll talk about some, some uh, current events as well because there's a big, big breaking news in, um, in France. The yellow vests have won. And um, I guess what they're calling, the major, mainstream media likes to call the far right is excelling. But anyway, just to show you what this is, is a, um, it's, this is Fort Hamilton. It's one of the only, it's the last of the forts in New York City, last functioning fort in New York City. And um, you're outside of the park. It's called Cannonball Park. I'm in this park all the time. You see it. Yeah. John Paul Jones Park, actually, it's called. This is where my uh, trees are. But nonetheless, today is the day we honor the falling, the falling dead. That's what Memorial Day is. It's not about, it's not about barbecues and beaches. It's about honoring the brave souls that fight for our freedom, right? For our democracy, for our well-being, our safety, right? But we're, what? But are the regime change wars of today really the same? So before the politics, well, I'll, I'll get into today's today's events, but just for the uh, statistics, right? 6,200 uh, dead since 2009 in, in wars, in, since 2001, right? So, so Bush, the Bush doctrine declares mass weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and boom, 6,200 dead since. 31,000. 900 wounded in action in Iraq alone. More historically, Vietnam, 164,000 dead from 1955 to 1964, and 1 1.4 million dead all the way up to 1975. Total of 1 1.6 million dead. World War II, 400,000. World War I, 116,000. The Civil War, Civil War, when you count, when you count both sides, the the Confederate and the um, and the, uh, the the <laughs> the Americans or whatever it was, right? Seven thousand, seven hundred and fifty thousand. Three quarters of a million people died fighting fighting each other over stuff. This stuff's ours. That stuff's ours. Fuck you. It's ours. That's what, this, that's what war is about, right? It's about stuff. Total, three million dead in all wars. Tens of millions wounded. All, and, and everything post, you know, Vietnam. World War II, arguably, it's hard to say what the politics were at the time. Was it justified, World War II? Was World War I justified? Were any of these wars justified? It's hard to say because we weren't alive during that time. At least I wasn't. But I could tell you, I mean, in my view, everything thereafter was a regime change war. Iraq, Afghanistan, Korean War. It was, it's all regime. It's all Vietnam. Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War, 550,000 troops. Right? They're all for profit now. The wars are for profit. Right? And what's the result? Dead. Six soldiers, okay? stories of, of um, stories of rape, stories of um, post-traumatic stress disorder, PD, PTSD, all over the place, right? There was a there was a uh, a thread on um, Zero Hedge I was looking at, and this guy was talking about why he why he uh, why he he gets involved in service. He got involved in service. And they thought it was going to be a pleasant thread. And thousands and thousands of people told their stories about the horrors of war, the nightmares, the, you know, the sleeplessness, the panic attacks, the recluse behavior, the abandonment uh, by, the, by officials. That was the story they told about, about their experience with war. 
And in a few hours, there'll be a celebration over here. And we'll honor the brave falling soldiers. Yeah. So I'll sum it up in a minute. But in history right now, the yellow vest, what's the real, what's the real form of, of, of warfare that we should be engaging in? It's, it's activism. It's getting out in the street like the yellow vest, right? So yellow vest scored a major victory, Gilles Jaune, right? Uh, Macron, um, Marine Le Pen, uh, of the anti-European National Rally uh, political party, defeated Emmanuel Macron, right? It doesn't mean Macron's not the president anymore. It just means his party is out of power, right? And the opposition party is, is leading him from behind, right? So Emmanuel R R Macron is the uh, centrist Republican republic and the Greens came in third. So Yellow Vest, got a, this is a big day for Yellow Vest, man. They, victory. They, 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 um, they took a lot of Macron's power away. Right? A lot might not change, but they're onto it, right? And also uh, Matteo Salini in Italy and Nigel Farage uh, in the Brexit party also advanced. They have about 150 seats now in the European Union. I know it's not very sexy for Americans. So we don't really know what's going on completely, but it's a big day for France and the Yellow Vest because they've taken Macron down a notch. Right? Also uh, in the news, um, North Korea calls John Bolton, the war criminal, a warmonger and a human defect. <laughs> Fucking North Korea said that shit about John Bolton, Trump's uh, national security advisor, right? Bolton said, uh, no doubt, no doubt uh, North Korea violated UN, U UN resolutions. <laughs> now there's a resolution. Now, now all of a sudden out of nowhere there's a resolution, right? <laughs> but when, when, they're, when they're in, when they're in Vietnam, uh, Venezuela and they're, you know, they're, they're, Ill they're illegally occupying them 140 countries around the world there's no resolution there's no there's no um, there's no resolution right but now all of a sudden at the end the, the UN has to step in because because North Korea shot a shot a tested a, a, a weapon there's a cannon over there and a bunch of soldiers let's go take a look at that and I'll sum up my message to my message to the troops. I just don't want people hearing what I'm saying because people may be offended by that. But over here, we'll see a, a 21 gun salute for Memorial Day. I don't know when it happens, but I hear it from my house every year. <laughs> So you see the artillery, right? I hope they're shooting blanks because they're pointing right at the bridge. <laughs> they're shooting real bullets. So they knocked the bridge down, right? Got some troops over here. So what does it all mean? What does it all mean? War. It's a day to honor. It's like it's just talking to a guy, right? Just talking to some guy in a uniform a minute ago, right? And I said, what, what does it all mean? You know, what does it all mean politically? He says, I, I don't do politics. It's like, well, how do, you, how do you separate the two, right? The politics are what caused the wars, right? Deployment, right? It's okay. It's okay, right? It's fair game to, to train troops to... Dogs looking for bombs. <laughs> it's okay to train troops. Is what I said is, you know, have a trained army, a, a well-skilled, well-financed army, small army, and that's good. The best of the best. People volunteer army that want to be members of of that, right? And but deployment is something different, right? 
deploying military to shoot guns at other people is, is, should always be a last resort. And until that day comes, until that, that, that is the United States policy to not deploy, until all of Congress and all of Senate and the, and the vast majority of, peop of people in the country agree that this is a justified war, then there should be no war. There should be no bullets fired. Because all it ends up is this. This is all you get. So I say to, I say to anybody deployed today or thinking about it, any young person that has those guys at their door knocking on the door, you should join. I remember when they told me when I was 18, they came knocking on my door, they said, how's your life going? Doesn't it suck? You know, I'm paraphrasing, but right? is, your li is your life after high school all you thought it would be? Why don't you join the, join the army and become a man? That's what they do. They prey on you. They, they hang out at the at the at the uh, the mall. <laughs> right? They show up. They set up a table in the high school, in the junior high school. Right? They prey on kids. They fucking prey on young people. For to, to fight the, the regime change war, to keep the oligarchy going, to keep the oil flowing, to keep to keep the the money machine moving. Right? You got to get those. You got to get Exxon and you got to get Citibank and all the, all the fucking corporations in those countries. And this is the cost. This is the cost. Dead soldiers with no, no, no connection to the politics. This service. Right? It can't be like that. Defect. Right? All out. Take, take the oligarchy down. This is not. It's not right. That's what I'm saying. It's it's. There's no way to sum it up. There's no way to, to say that that regime change war that results in dead bodies, dead dead Americans, under the under the premise of service, is justified. There's no way to justify it. Right? Without the, without this, without dead soldiers, without soldiers who ultimately become dead soldiers. There is no regime change war. It's impossible. We volunteer for this. They, everybody there signed up for that. They signed a contract that they could never get out of. And it cost them their lives. And why? It's poverty, right? It's, it's, it's a sense of desperation. It's low wages that cause people to want to be in the military. Low wages. You'll have a good life college afterwards right? but if we make college tuition free and we make universal single-payer health care you, you see how the struggle goes down if you raise the minimum wage people would be very less likely young people would be much less likely to sign up to, to possibly die now statistically it's only one or two percent of the people that join die but actually it's a, a much higher than that but it's only a 1% of the population, less. But it's a very high, a very high number of people dying for no reason. Right? Dying, you wanna die? Die of old age, you know what I mean? So, we'll let these people, I'm gonna walk away from the music because I don't wanna get a copyright strike. <laughs> You'll start seeing advertisements. You know, those were the days. Oh yes, those were the days. Try to get away from it so it doesn't strike me. Oh yes, those were the days, my friends. So I leave you with this shot of Memorial Day. All of these in New York alone. These are our falling heroes. Just rows and rows of falling heroes. Marcus Conti reporting.